Welcome back to the Chair QA Edition. This is where we take a game, we break it down, tell you if it works, uh, if it performs, how are the graphics and how it controls, and we'll rate that uh, on a pass-fail basis with one chair, uh, tally that, and give you a score at the end for how it works. At the Then we'll uh, talk about the fun, give it an arbitrary score of one to four chairs, and uh, then we'll get out of here and read some hate mail. This week we're looking at The Stick of Truth! Uh, it's developed by Microsoft, uh, <laughs> done on the Onyx engine. You can pick it up for around, uh, if you're in Canada, it's 40 bucks. If you're everywhere else, it's about 30. Um, what is it? From the perilous battlefields of the fourth grade playground, a young hero will rise, destined to be South Park savior. From the creators of South Park, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, comes an epic quest to become Q. Introducing South Park, the stick of truth, that game I just told you about. All right. So how did it run? Uh, actually, so actually, this is uh, this is a Proton game. Uh, we mentioned this, this earlier in the Steam segment. Got recently added to the whitelist, so we're gonna give you the business. How did how did it run on Ubuntu? On eighteen oh four LTS, it worked out of the box as advertised. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, every time there's a major whitelist update, we're going to try to get at least one game in. This one won the lottery, the short stick, because we all kind of had a copy, and. Um, no issues, as advertised, man. We were talking about convenience, Trump's fidelity. We got both with this, uh, being on the white list. Click play, worked. That's it. Nothing to complain about. And it's going to be running at roughly, thir well, it's hard locked at 30, so you better be able to run that. I'm doing that at 1080p and 2160, also known as UHD. That's just what it's going to run at, period. Get over it. Deal with it. Graphics, look at it. It's South Park. You can't fuck that up. I like it. And no, unfortunately, there's a decided lack of 3D turkeys. Hashtag so <laughs> you're old enough to remember that piece of shit game. Control. However, gentlemen, control had a few issues with because out of the box, this thing does not work with the Areola controller. Not at all. Well, it does until about an hour in when you need to learn your dragon shout, your farts. Then it goes to shit. Ha, uh, mm, not really. But it does it actually go to shit. And I'm dumb enough to just assume that I'm failing hard enough to not get the control sequence down correctly for a good five to seven minutes before I go to the Googles. Ah, turns out this was a problem. The good thing about the Steam controller is I was able to painlessly uh, just download a community-created config, update it, boom, then it worked. And... Kind of nerfed uh, my right areola for aiming, but I was able to use the D-pad for that. But I'm, what I'm kind of saying is there's no rebindable control, so I'm going to get on that. But everything worked, technically. You could make it work. No complaints, no fault to Proton, just to fault to the original game itself. Uh, yeah, so on uh, Fedora 2864-bit with the i7-6700K GTX 1080 Ti, it does launch, although it's it's never not going to be weird seeing DirectX install through Steam. It's just it doesn't sit right. Uh, performance wise, I played this at UHD. It's capped at 30 either way. Um, it gets really weird though because the cinematics are done at either 1080p, 900p, or 720p, and so when it goes from in-game to cinematics, everything gets a little shittier. But I mean, <laughs> it's South Park, so it it's just a small enough difference that it bugs you. Um, uh, controls, it works out of the box with the, uh, DualShock, although, I will say, it has some, it has some, like, Guitar Hero DDR segments that use the Xbox prompt, which is a pain in the ass. I couldn't get past the goth kids until I went <laughs> box controller and then did the freaking thing. I gotta um, ask you, you, you made it into the spaceship at Taco Bell, right? Uh, yes. Okay, when, when you're doing the Simon Says thing? Oh yeah, that's that's. Well, well, and it's you the first one. You're like, oh, I get this guy. Then they just give you two that just legitimately. They're like, ha, ah, fuck you. Oh, well, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I saw that. I'm like, yeah, no, they probably don't expect me to do that. But what if I could? What if I nailed it? <laughs> but they just let me. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's like a, a task thing for that. Um, but yeah. Anyway, anyways, I'll give it a solid four on Fedora. Fedora. Pedro? Yes. So over here on Solus with the uh, GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600, it did indeed launch and it stayed launched. I didn't have any issues with it crashing. The performance, yeah, it's locked at 30, but then again, it's South Park, so it would look good even at 12. Uh, the graphics, there's not much in the way of options, but then again, it's not like you need them to attain the desired effect. And 
At about 10 hours in, I did get hit by a bit of the cracklies, which made the whole game sound sound very garbled, but yeah. Uh, the controls, it worked out of the box with uh, the 8 bit do NES Pro controller. Uh, that one worked just fine. Uh, the lack of rebindable controls is a damn shame, but you know, I felt the default layout on the... Uh, 8 but do here was uh, acceptable, so it gets three chairs. All right. So I guess before we before we continue in the fun section, so Ben, you 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 what what did what did you play? You got you got four you got four choices at the beginning. You got warrior, mage, thief, and Jew. Who'd you pick? The uh, the ultimate class, Jew. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> Come on, Jeff, man. I mean, I, I had my dreidel attacks and. All, all the other fun stuff. So, 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 did did you have fun being a member of the tribe? Well, tell me how accurate you know being the resident Jew on the show. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> listen, at, at, I mean, I mean, it's it's your part of the fun section, but I will say, it's circumcision circumcision strat is like a really really good thing if you're playing the Jew. So there's there's a lot actual Jewish person, ladies and gentlemen. So fuck off with the hate mail, because um, I'm about to just go crazy here. Uh, I there, there's some things in here you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you going there? This game, I'm going there. At one point, the spaceship, you have to acquire the white power crystal, which is just a white crystal that provides power. But yeah, that's the name. <laughs> Shortly after that, you meet Hitler Hobo. And as I pointed out earlier, the game straight up fucks with you on the Simon Says part. You're like, really? All right. Ha ha. I get it. Um, when Jimmy's talking, ah, that's kind of fun. <laughs> You're going to skip it. <laughs> oh, oh. The, the oh, game I, just like straight up throws the B button up. It's like, come on, really? I, 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 I had a glitch where in one of those Jimmy moments, it wouldn't let me hit B. I did space on the keyboard. It's it was not a glitch. Oh. It's not a glitch. Yeah, it, that's it, it, deliberate it's a, right it, they will just it'll just sit there we'll never continue at some point until you hit yeah. down b uh then we get to the nazis lots of nazis in this game and you really first uh it hits you when i think your solid introduction outside of the zombie nazis because that's what the uh, taco bell ship is doing to everyone nazi fetuses because you are is a south park you're in an abortion clinic and you know where this is going. You just yes. know. As soon as you walk in, you're like, yeah, we're going here. Sure fucking enough. Yes, you, you're you fighting Nazi fetuses. N not not to be outdone by Nazi kittens, Nazi cows. Uh, there was, you get to travel to Canada where everything goes like 8-bit and they have the Terrence and Philip Canadian Matrix. That was kind of interesting. Uh, a couple of the things you do battle with gnomes while your parents are shagging. And one of the times, because you can hear them through the wall. And a little bit later, it's like, oh, well, you know, better left to the imagination. Nope. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> no. That, 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 that's part of the fight, too, is the great yeah, thing. That, that was the thing. I mean, it's still, I knew what I was walking into, but this game delivered enough to be like, really? Okay, fine. <laughs> Snooks, uh, Mr. Slave. You can put two and 13 together on that one. Then, of course, um, Kenny has a uh, Nazi zombie unicorn, which is a whole different story. <laughs> Short story long, I vend it in 10 hours. And when you vend a game that is genuinely getting from point A to point B as quick as possible, because I'm into a game to beat it, not to do all the side quests. Uh, look at Mad Max compared to like Pedro's, like at like 500 hours into it. It's like, man, I nerfed that thing in like 12. <laughs> so. What I'll say about the game itself, whatever default difficulty we have, I uh, kind of wish it was set a little higher like, after I've beaten it and gotten through. And I was like, yeah, I could have dealt with a little bit more on that. Kind of, but I kind of think the point was to give you an interactive South Park movie with a bit of a challenge to it. And they did a good job of keeping me entertained between the fighting segments, you see them on the video, and it's turn based strategy. But Jordan kind of hit me across my brain meats last night with something and after that he made a remark that did make me think for a second because the stick of truth with the turn-based fighting gave me something to do other than sitting around waiting on rng to play out you know plus your strats and all that they gave me a fucking block button so i was like oh block 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 i know that sounds really dumb but if you loathe turn-based games this might help you out it helped me out greatly um it looks like South Park, sounds like South Park. That's not a bad thing. I enjoyed it. The attention to detail, 
the soundtrack is great. It kicks in. And sometimes I think Jordan will even comment that you hang around places just listening to things. You're like, all right, this is good. Uh, you can play it for the story and not feel bad because it's a good one. I'll give us a solid three. No, like like Ben said, it's a, it's a playable episode of South Park. And I, and I think the difficulty is calibrated definitely to accommodate that. Um, I will say, though, Al Gore kicked my ass. It, mm-hmm. took, a, it, took, it took a couple tries to figure that one out. Um, but then I realized... Um, like, so here, here's the thing. The RPG mechanics of South Park, the, the stick of truth are like super bare bones, but they're there for you to take advantage of. You can, you can stack up your numbers and get better numbers than everyone else and kick their asses. And the game actually does a decent job of sort of enforcing the gameplay that it tries to teach you where a lot of, a lot of RPGs, you can kind of get by just by doing the basic attacks. This one, oh no, you actually have to pay attention to your enemies. They're taking stances. There's an armor mechanic you have to deal with where you have to wear down armor first and there are abilities that will make that easier or harder. And I, I, th- I think it does a really good job of enforcing the rules that it sets out for you and, and does so in a way that isn't like completely fucking stupid. Um, so... I already played through this on the PlayStation 4, so I, I know how it ends. So I decided to take the fine-tooth comb approach to this game. And, yeah, it's it's very meticulously well-crafted. Like, all, all the environments, random item placements were just, like, junk you can sell, but it's, like, junk that references stuff that happens to characters. You, you go into, like, Stan's mom's bathroom and you get some Cherokee hair tampons and all, 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 all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, all, 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 all sorts of good stuff. Um, the combat system, like Ven mentioned, uh, has a quick time event element uh, to it. It's basically pretty much lifted from Legend of Dragoon for the PlayStation, if you ever played that. Uh, you got to time your tam- attacks and blocks with a prompt for massive damage. I find blocking a little annoying just because, like, yeah, it gives you the, the little icon, but sometimes it feels kind of arbitrary when a block occurs and when it doesn't. Um, and honestly, what it lacks in gameplay depth is more than made up for by just the, the story and presentation they it it does what it says on the tin it's a it's a playable episode of south park it makes you feel like you're in in an episode it's super self-referential people who designed it have have played clearly played a lot of computer rpgs and they make fun of them a lot it's it's, it's, it's just very well done we'll give it a solid three chairs yeah it's uh what if skyrim was told uh by way of a jrpg with fart jokes and that kind of brings me to my points. It's like, what if an RPG was told by means of satire and fart jokes? What if the fart itself was glorified to the point of a core game mechanic? See, those two separate precepts are very likely to fall into, you know, the side of campiness and basically any game relying on those will probably wear out its welcome really quickly. But South Park, the sick of truth, manages to straddle the line between the proverbial dead horse uh, of the fart jokes and having really interesting gameplay. Uh, The, if anything, I think the combat is perhaps uh, the point that starts to wear really thin on the ground and starts grating on me a little more than it should. Uh, I couldn't wait to unlock the ground stomp ability for the warrior, because that's the class I'm playing on the video there, because that's like the big powerful area of effect um, thing. Uh, So I could just take out hordes of enemies. It's basically, oh, we're going to fill the screen with enemies. Well, there we go. I just clear them all out with one attack. And yeah, it's um, it takes a while to unlock that ability and combat can become, if you're playing a warrior, combat can become a bit of a, uh, a chore. But the story around it, like it, it is very much a South Park movie, a South Park episode in game form, and I absolutely love it. Uh, uh, like most Obsidian games, there's always something keeping me from giving it a perfect score, and in this one, it's just how repetitive the combat can become so three chairs for me all right well there you go south park sick of truth pretty fun if you like running a heretic purchase or it's on sale and bundle maybe pick it up have, have some fun runs out of the box on steam yep just don't use this, yep. just don't use the steam controller <laughs> plenty to like plenty to love yeah uh, yeah um <laughs> christmas is coming up if you you have uh brothers and sisters children that 
Oh, oh man, I forget yes, how... Yes, children, give this to your children, please. Here's the difficulty <laughs> curve, though, but, like, people old enough, like, in their mid to late 30s that have kids are like, oh, fuck you, ah, I grew up in South Park, I'm not going to... <laughs> you know... You can't pull one. <laughs> Listen, if you have family members that live in Utah, you can probably get them. Mm-hmm. Pro tip. Hashtag LGC or, or, or at least tickets to the Book of Mormon.